everybody. Happy early Valentine's Day. Well, I brought this in here to write on it and I didn't bring anything to write with. <laughs> oh, I don't know about y'all, but we've had a heck of a time. <laughs> we haven't had much chance to sit down or do anything. That's the reason why we haven't been on. Uh, looking forward to today. I think she is too. I hope you are. Yeah, we, we do an annual um, Valentine's dinner with our kids, and we're going to do that today. Yep. Let's just go ahead and share it. Hmm. So. There it is. I was like looking. Yeah, I that on it too. So I hope y'all have had a good week. I know we've had quite a bit of winter weather here recently, which is a little odd for us. Yeah. But I'm really enjoying it, actually. Hey, Mama. Yeah, I even got my Valentine shirt on. It says, I'm a sucker for you. Yep. <laughs> oh. So we're going to do week six of our coins covenant and character so this has been a really good series and i've really enjoyed it um the past several weeks and i really missed last week um but you know with the super bowl and gary's work schedule and it was just kind of cra kooky crazy and we did not have a chance he also had class last saturday and yeah, so, so it was just like um there's no room <laughs> yeah we tried but we couldn't find a place to put it in so. yeah so i hope you'll forgive us but um we're here today and we're happy to be here yep i especially am so yeah <laughs> after last night and all the weather coming in i'm i'm glad i didn't have to do anything more than i did at school or at work last night so yeah it's like school so week six is called Finders Keepers, um, and we're going to go to Colossians uh, 3, verses 12 through 15. And I'm already marked there. Woohoo! Well, that's good. I hope somebody's prepared. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it says, Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another, and forgiving one another if anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. So these verses were from... You know, we're talking about, you know, the 10 characteristics, mm -hmm. which the, the coins represent, the coins of character. So there are 10 different um, coins here that represent the character. I'm going to go back and find a list, of, I think. Maybe, maybe not. You can fill in the gaps if you want. <laughs> well, I know. I've really enjoyed this study, especially considering that, you know, one of the things that has been brought out is sometimes what you've lost is even still in your own house. Yes, exactly. I mean, and nothing that you believe you've lost is gone for good. Because, you know, God's promised us, promised us that he would actually restore things to us. Yes. If we come and, you know, begin our work again with him. And one of the, that's one of the greatest things out there is that God promises us that we can start again. So no matter how many times we fall on our face, we can still get up. Well, I think one of the great things about this is is it can speak to a whole group of people on so many levels. Yep. You're either coming to know Christ and getting these characteristics instilled in you, you're you're you've lost them and you're finding them again, or you're polishing them up. And maybe they've yep. dulled. Um, but these are the ten characteristics that we just read, um, and this is the list: compassion kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, forbearance, forgiveness, love, peace, and gratitude. And these are very similar, but there's a few differences to the fruit of the Spirit. Um, mm -hmm. So if you are operating in the Spirit, you know, the Spirit brings with Him the fruit of the Spirit. Yep. And you should, you should be exhibiting those fruit in your life. 
um, if you're allowing um, your spirit man to take over. Yeah, and we'd, we'd talked about it earlier that the fruit of the spirit aren't meant for you just to keep. No. They're to be given away, just like fruit right. falls from the vine when it's time you pick it and you give it to people. Yep. You know, your kindness, your long suffering. That's one of the ones. <laughs> bless you. That's one of those that seems like in, it's in constant need right now is long suffering with people. Yes. And, you know, kindness, gentleness, those things are almost becoming extinct. Yes. And when we talk about saying the truth in love and with gentleness and meekness, saying that, you know, I was a sinner as well. This is nothing new to me. Exactly. I'm just wanting you to come to know the same Christ that I do. Yep. So what a journey we have taken through the study together. We have purposed in our heart to hold tightly to our covenant and walk in daily commitment to Christ. We have rejoiced in finding our lost coins of covenant. Mm -hmm. And now we will dis discuss how we will keep what has been recovered. So at this point in our study, we know the 10 coins of covenant well. The Lord has been so real to me in the past few weeks and months mm -hmm. as I've gone over these characteristics and prayed to always hold tightly to them. The enemy is afraid of a believer who walks in total covenant with the Lord. I mean, that statement right there is so true. I know there's there's been a saying that says uh, your prayer life should be so powerful that when you get up in the morning that that the demons tremble. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, and is it, are, are you walking in the power that God has given you? Are you, do you have a prayer life or are you exhibiting these characteristics? Well, one of the, I've read a book that said, you know, the thing that hell fears almost more than anything else is a true Christian. Yeah. One that knows who they are, one that does what they're supposed to do, one that praises God, worships God, and has a relationship with God that can tear down strongholds, that yes. can blow away, you know, demonic possession, that can do things that they're called to do. And the thing is, it's not limited to a select few. The gifts that are exhibited here, you know, that we read about in the Bible aren't just for biblical times. Yeah. Disciples, you know, the things that we see them do, we're going to be able to do them also. We just need to continue to pray and get closer to God contend with our doubt is the biggest part of it yes so remember he cannot imitate character satan cannot imitate character and when we do not give him any place in our lives we walk in our redeemed nature we're going to look again at the passage in ephesian that we that you know we've looked at before and this is verse 27 it says but you have not so learned christ if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, putting away lying, let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath nor give place to the devil. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor working with hands that is good, that he may have something to give him who is in need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even in God and Christ forgave you. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that I just want to mention here, um, because I think we've all, if you've been a Christian, you know, a long time, I think we've all been guilty of this at one point or another, that, you know, sometimes we think, um, that we're helping somebody by saying stuff. Mm -hmm. But just as what Gary was saying a few minutes ago, that you have to speak the truth in love. If you are not speaking the truth in love to edify somebody, then you know, it's gossip. Yep. I mean, and I think sometimes we get so caught up in what other people are doing and, and we, we want to point it out, and then we get to gossiping about it. Mm -hmm. And that's dangerous. It's dangerous ground because now... 
we're involved in something that is is evil. Gossip yeah. is evil. I've heard before that if you're not requesting prayer for somebody else, you shouldn't really be talking about That's somebody right. else because it's like Crystal was saying, it's a slippery slope when you start talking about something. You know, the negative things try to come out easier than any positive thing. You're not talking about that the person's doing good. You're usually talking about what they're doing. Yes, exactly. Or what you think they're doing. Because a lot of the times we have a perception of what's going on, but some, oh, we don't know exactly what's going exactly. on. Exactly. And when you're talking, you know, when you're talking with an individual and they need, you know, that gentle... What is it? I guess uh, chastising <laughs> that happens sometimes. But, you know, God's not always going to be using you to do it. That's God right. can get his message across in that person's prayer life. He can get it across. You know, sometimes just going down the road, I understand that I'm not doing everything I'm supposed to be doing. And, you know, I start praying and hope, um, wanting God to start changing me. Well, and, you know, I know just like if you've ever grown a little plant and my girls like let the spring they got into you know during quarantine making a garden and stuff and and they planted things and they waited for them to sprout but the thing about it is is when a, a new christian um has just planted the seeds you see the the growth goes down before it comes up mm -hmm. And so there's things going on in their life that you can't even see yet. And if you reach down and touch that tender plant, because when it first comes out of the ground, it's going to be covered in dirt. It's not going to be clean. But if you try to clean that plant, you'll kill it. And that's not up to us. It's up to the Holy Spirit to, to rain down on them and to wash all that dirt off. And that's why, you know, gossip can be so detrimental to people, especially if you're talking about someone that's, you know, a new Christian, um, that they just don't know better. And, you know, you can discern. Ask God to help you to discern. Is this a time where I need to speak truth or is this a time where I need to, to shut up? You know, because <laughs> being silent can be the Holy Spirit's will yeah, for I mean, you. Being silent can be the best thing yes. for it at some time. Exactly. And, you know, I was thinking while well, you were saying that God never condemns, so we should never condemn. Exactly. Anything that comes out of our mouth that is a condemnation does not come from God. Exactly. And we need to be able to edify that person no matter what they're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to be able to pray for that person and not say, you know, God, they're doing this. And I don't want them to do that. We should be confessing, Lord, I want them to grow in your word. I want them to have a relationship with you. Yes. Start praying those things that you want them to have instead of praying those things that they already have and they're yeah, trying to I get mean, rid of. Your prayer life can become a gossip session with God. You can just sit there and tell, tell God everything wrong that's going on with somebody else. And is that really edifying you or your prayer life? No. You need to speak to the future. You need to speak the good things that you want to see. You know, speak it over yourself. Speak it over your spouse. Speak it over anybody. You know, don't just sit there and gossip with God. I think after a while, God's like, I'm not, I'm not going to listen to that <laughs> anymore. And it really doesn't do you any good. You'll, you'll go down in prayer frustrated, and you'll come back up frustrated because all you've done is gossip. And you'll be worse off when you finish because now you think God's as mad as you are. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, no, it doesn't work like that. He sees us through this filter that um, we don't see everybody through and we actually need to start seeing them through. Yes. That filter is love. Exactly. That filter is who they will become, not who they are right now. You know, the things that sometimes the kids will get up and they'll do stuff that is just really off base. <laughs> you know, you don't go over and criticize them. You try to push them and help them to find actually what they're supposed to be doing. Yep. So as we discussed in the study, the devil wants us to react in our old nature so that he can heap condemnation or self-righteousness on us, hiding our redeemed character. We have determined to stop that from happening anymore in our walk with Christ. We have spent time in repentance and in the recovery process. Now we will discuss how we will keep forever what we have found again. Mm -hmm. 
I remember vividly how this series of messages was birthed. And this, I'm reading this from Ron, this is Rhonda Holland's words, because this is her study. Yep. Um, I shared with you in the introduction of this Bible study, while standing before the group of ladies at a retreat, the Lord spoke to my heart three important points that will help us to retain our coins of covenant. And I want to share them with you what I learned. The first point is that love solidifies, unites and bonds all the other ingredients of our new nature together. Love is the main ingredient in the recipe for our redeemed character. Without love, it is impossible to hold on to the other nine coins of covenant. And, you know, even in the Bible, what's that verse say? The greatest of these is love. Mm -hmm. Love always solidifies everything. Um, everything we should do should be in love. And just like you said, I keep going back to that. I guess it was the statement of the day is that if we're going to speak truth, it has to be truth in love. Mm -hmm. Love has to be the ingredient for which we do everything else. Well, just like Jesus said, they, the world will know you are one, you know, by the way you love one another. Yes, exactly. The, you'll know, the world will know you are mine by the way you love one another. And that's what we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be loving and kind and we're yes. supposed to be edifying to each other. And, you know, it just blows people away that we're supposed to be like that. Well, and I don't like it, especially when the world, you know, portrays Christians on the news. They always portray, you know, these fanatics that, you know, are going to blow up an abortion clinic or... Or um, you know they're gonna they're gonna kill people you know out of racial differences, and that that is not Christianity. That is not that is not a good representation of who we are, because you know who we are should be people that love that we react out of love, that we you know hate the sin and we love the sinner. I don't care who you are. You're welcome in my church. You're welcome mm -hmm. to sit with me because God made you. You are God's creation and he loves you. And as, as a child of, of God, I'm going to love you too. And, you know, it all comes back to when our kids, our kids misbehave, you know, we're, we're upset with them that they misbehave, but it doesn't change the fact that we love our kids. Mm -hmm. And so we have to recognize that, that that's how God loves us. We are his creation. He created us. And there is a plan and a purpose for our life. And just because we're not living in that plan or purpose doesn't mean he loves us any less. He loves us enough that he's trying to get us back on track. Well, you know, one of my favorite verses is the one that says, while we were enemies with God, he, loved he us. sent his son to die for us. He loved us that much when yes. we were completely against him. And, you know, I don't think that there's a person in this world that would die for their enemy. No. If they were truly <laughs> an enemy. And, you know, but we're supposed to show the same love that Christ showed yes. us. That no matter who, you know, it even says if you're struck, if somebody hits you, turn the other cheek. And, you know, that sometimes... <laughs> doesn't want to work because this you know when you get hit when especially if you're slapped in the face you want to turn around and just punch the person yeah so i mean we have we always wrestle with the carnality of our flesh yes. and what god wants us to do and that's why you know it says also that the things i want to do i don't do and the things i'm supposed to do i don't do or i want the things i want to do i don't do but the things i don't want to do i do and that's the wrestling between the flesh and the um, spirit. And it's so hard sometimes to do what the spirit wants you to do when yes. every fiber of your being is screaming that you need to do something else. Well, and we have to recognize that we live in a fallen world and we're living in this, this fleshly body. Mm -hmm. And our first response in the flesh is not going to be the right response. Yeah. That we have to kill the flesh every day. I mean, that's, that's Bible, folks that you have to pick up your cross and follow him every day. So your first initial response is not going to be, you know, the right one. Mm -hmm. Your body and your mind is going to want to do what it wants to do because it, that's its nature. And that's where we have to retrain our brain. We have to, mm -hmm. you know, make the spirit man the priority, make that the person that's responding. Yeah, and it's so hard sometimes to get away from that. It is. And... 
you know, we just see how this world's reacting right now. They're putting restrictions on things and pushing back against things. And it's not even out of um, any kind of love. It's out of fear of being sued. It's out of fear of saying the wrong thing. And, you know, it's a feeling most of the time that they're trying to govern and are through feelings that they're trying to govern. You know, if people feel like this is wrong, then it's wrong. But yet we know that your feelings lie to you. We know that your heart is the most deceitful thing in your body. We know that we have to believe what God says in his word and override what we feel sometimes because it's completely wrong. Yeah, it's true. So the second thing is peace soothes the believer, making our new nature readily displayed in times of con contentment and conflict. Mm. And, you know, that scripture always comes pa back to me where it talks about um, peace that surpasses understanding. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, we can have total chaos going on around us, but we can be at complete peace because we know with whom we trust. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I know I mention it all the time, but I just always go back to the, the night my, my dad died. Uh, my mom was at, at complete peace, not, not to say she didn't struggle, you know, with things afterward, but just her t talking to her, she was being soothed by that peace that only comes from um, the Holy Spirit and, and, and the understanding of who was in control of that whole moment. Yep. I mean, he's not called the comforter for nothing. <laughs> yeah. So thirdly, gratitude seals all the characteristics of our covenant tightly together because we focus on what is right in our lives rather than what is wrong. And this causes us to hold close to our heart the other character traits of our commitment. So, you know, have an attitude of gratitude. Everything mm -hmm. you do must be done in love. Allow the Holy Spirit to give you that peace that surpasses understanding even when you don't know what God is doing, trust him and, and accept his peace and be grateful no matter what. Have an attitude of gratitude. Yep. And, you know, that goes back to praise and worship, knowing who you are, knowing what, yes. who he is and what he did for you. Yes. Because when you really focus on what, you know, God did for us, you know, his only son was given for us. Yes. It, all you can do is praise him. Yes. So love is the bond that holds these characteristics together. When we have love, we have a powerful gift from God. Look at some wonderful promises concerning the power of love. And I think it's so funny that this is, this is the day that we're doing this right before Valentine's yep. Day. Above all things, have intense, unfailing love for one another. For love covers a multitude of sins. And that is 1 Peter 4 and 8. Uh, Proverbs 10 and 12 says, Hatred stirs up contentions, but love covers all transgressions. Whoever would love, would foster love, covers over an offense, but whoever repeats the matter separates close friends. And that is Proverbs 17 and 9. That sounds like gossip. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was just about to say that, you know, if you are operating in love, you're not going to gossip about people. Um, and, and I go back to, to that story of Noah, um, you know, and he had the three sons and Noah made a mistake one night. He, he drank excessively and, um, he was laying nude in his tent and, um, the one son exposed him in his nudity and the other two sons mm -hmm. walked backwards into the tent so they wouldn't see it and covered him in his nakedness. That is love. Um, you know, which one are you? Which one are you? Are you the one that's going to go walk around and expose somebody for everything? That, and, and I'm not saying that it's not true. The son, he saw his dad in his nakedness, and it wasn't untrue what he said. He didn't speak a lie. Um, so technically, he really didn't sin. But just talking about it, it was evil. He should have had his dad's back and taken care of him out of love instead of going and exposing him. Yeah, I mean, he could have covered the situation up. He yes. could have went in there like his brothers did and actually yes. covered it up. But, you know, it's one of those things that it really depends on who you're listening to. Yes. And, 
you know, out the first verse you read that love covers a multitude of sins. You know, he who has been forgiven much loves much. Yes. And sometimes I forget how much that God's actually forgiven me and where I should be and where I am right now when they're completely different than what I... Because if I was to have continued just doing what I thought was right in the world and not, you know, following the leading of Christ, then our life would have been completely different. That's right. That's so right. All right. Yes, love solidifies the other characteristics. When we genuinely love each other, it is so much easier to have compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, forbearance, forgiveness, peace, and gratitude intact. Love is the characteristic that solidifies our new nature. How do I hold on to my coins of covenant? Ask God to give you a healthy level of his love for all you come in contact with. It will cause you to demonstrate the redeemed nature of Christ every time. And you know, one of the things I, I can honestly say is if you don't know about your love level, then take um, inventory on how you are talking about people. Um, you know, like we, we've really gotten into talking about gossip today. And if you are talking about people and instead of talking to people, you might have a love problem. Yeah. And if you're talking about a person that's not there <laughs> in the conversation, yes. you know, if we can't say it to the person's face, we probably don't need to say it. That's right. And that's right. <clears throat> you know, I, that's one of those Alj man kind of things. It's true. Because it's like, you know, what are we really doing? Are we trying to help someone out? Or are we trying to just say that they need to be corrected? You know, are we going to look after the people around us? You know, the ones that are in the body of Christ with us? You know, are we trying to build them up? Are we trying to, you know, make them look bad? I mean, honestly... We have to purpose in our heart what we're going to do. Yes, exactly. So our next two coins that we're talking about today is peace and gratitude. So let's take a look at the importance of peace. Always remember that peace soothes. We are instructed to let the peace of God rule in our hearts. Rule, in verse 15, is the word from which our term for umpire is derived. Get a mental picture of this. When we experience salvation, the peace of God becomes the umpire in our heart. Oh, I lost my place, sorry. Standing guard over our thoughts and declaring that thought is safe or no, you're out or home run. When we allow the peace of God to literally umpire our hearts, our thought process changes because we will not permit ungodly discouraging thoughts to stay in our mind, destroying our new nature. Thoughts that derive from the old nature will not be permitted when we allow God's peace to umpire our thoughts. And that same umpire will allow good thoughts based on our new nature to flourish and enhance our Christ-like nature. Peace is a sweet, God-given comfort to us in a chaotic and uncertain world. So love solidifies and peace soothes us in our covenant with Christ. Let the peace of God umpire every thought and soothe you in your time of trouble. The world cannot manufacture peace. True peace only comes from walking in the covenant with our Savior. I just want to say, you know, that statement is so true because the, the world does not give us peace. The world mm -hmm. keeps us in unrest at all times. Yep. But, you know, knowing that there is an almighty God that holds everything in his hands and there's not one thing that happens without his knowledge, um, it should give us peace yep. that he has us taking care of it. Everything is under control because he's in control and he is who we serve. You know, I was thinking while you were reading that about the only time that God ever addressed anything about the Pharisees or Sadducees or anything was when they were there. The rest of the time, he was talking about the Father. He was talking about forgiveness. He was doing miracles. And, you know, instead of talking about people who aren't there, we need to talk about the one who is there all the time. We need to come forward. We need to witness about Christ. We need to witness about God. You know, we need to say what the Holy Spirit's done for us lately. 
you know, it's just, I'm just sitting here going, you know, no matter where he was, even, you know, his disciples were with him in all of those situations where the Pharisees were trying to trap him. He wasn't wasting time when he was away from them talking about them. So, you know, it goes back to our idle words. Mm -hmm. You know, are we using our words to actually build something or are we trying to tear down things? Yes. And are those things that we're trying to tear down, are they actually there? Yes. When I have peace, my mind is settled. My nature is calm and it is easier to maintain my redeemed walk. Um, and John 14, 27 says, Peace I leave with you. My own peace now give and bequeath to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Stop allowing yourselves to be so agitated and disturbed, and do not permit yourselves to be fearful and intimidated and cowardly and unsettled. And, you know, Gary and I just experienced, you know, a, a peace breaking moment yesterday. Our daughter Hannah has been really sick and you know, we've just felt like it's, it's been a, a, a spiritual attack mm -hmm. more than an actual illness. And, um, you know, our peace was being disrupted because our daughter just, she wasn't even in her, in herself. She wasn't acting like herself. Yeah. And yesterday, we invaded our house with the with the Holy Spirit. We started praying. My mom was on speakerphone, and she was praying. And um, right after that, the peace of God reigned supreme in our house the rest mm -hmm. of the day. Um, our daughter came back to herself. Um, she act, started acting right. And we have got to recognize those moments when the enemy is coming against our peace, and we have got to put God back into the position so that our peace is intact. You know, and I just want to say the thing that was going through my head, you know, and in what I was feeling was, you know, turmoil. Oh, we got to rush her to the ER. This is going to happen. This is going to happen. We don't have the money for this. Not insurance yet. You know, all this stuff was running through my head. But just like it says, we can't let ourselves because it's a decision. It's something that you've yes. made up your mind that this is going to be the way it is now. Yes. And, you know, I'm not saying not go, don't go to the doctor. I'm saying that, you know, we need to take a stand. Yes. And we need to say, you know, God, you are capable of taking care of this situation. Even though it looks like there's nothing else we can do. Yes. We've prayed and we've prayed and I'm like, when you and you know when crystal and i have prayed and then it's still nothing's happening start calling people <laughs> <laughs> i mean that's my if it's not just me and my wife we need somebody else we start calling people we start calling people that we know can pray yes. that we know believe the way we do that we know that they know god you need, can you need heal. people to storm heaven you know, mm -hmm. when you get in those moments, this, this scripture verse here is, has been my go-to scripture for a long time, probably 20 years. It says, you will guard him and keep him in perfect and constant peace whose mind um, is stayed on you because he commits himself to you, leans mm -hmm. on you, and hopes confidently in you. So trust in the Lord, commit yourself to him, lean on him, hope confidently in him forever. For the Lord God is an everlasting rock. And that's Isaiah 26, three and four. Um, there was many times in my life where I had to just dwell on those scriptures, um, you know, to keep my peace because there were so many things that were, you know, coming against my, my mind, um, you know, trying to just instill fear. You know, when it talks about leaning on the rock or God or Jesus is the rock of our salvation, I always go back to the foundation and bedrock, which is what you're supposed to build on. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in Matthew, the one that says that when you build upon the rock, the storm can come, the wind can blow, the waters can rise, but the foundation will not be washed away, the house will stand. Yes. And that's what I really feel like we're supposed to be doing because we're coming into a season in this planet that everything is going to be 
you know, a storm. It's going to be pushback and pushing and war and rumor of war. And we have to solidify who we are. We have to solidify our foundation on Christ. Otherwise, when the things that are going to be coming come, we will be blown over. Yep. So, peace is a valuable benefit for the believer. Real and lasting peace is a gift from God and belongs only to those who truly experience and walk consistently in a relationship with Christ. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'm going to read another verse. And it says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, shall guard your hearts and minds through Christ. This verse shows us the power of both peace and gratitude. So now mm -hmm. we're going to start talking about gratitude. It begins by telling us not to worry, but to pray. And in prayer, make your needs known and offer thanksgiving. Thanksgiving at the time of your petition indicates that you believe in advance that your prayers will be answered. Mm -hmm. I mean, and that's the thing, too. There's so many people that will go down and ask for prayer and, and pray at the altar, and heaven will come down. But then they mess it up because the first thing they say is, well, I hope that works. No. Don't say that. Don't let it come out of your mouth. The first thing you should say is, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for my healing. Thank you for my peace. Thank you that, you know, you have defeated um, death, you know, sin in the grave on, on Calvary. You know, that should be your response um, because that solidifies your peace and the answer that you have coming. Um, Thanksgiving, oh, I just read that. <laughs> As a result, your peace increases. It will increase your peace. And that peace soothes your heart and is a testimony to others of your character. Yep. Now let's look at gratitude. We are instructed in Colossians 3.15 to be thankful. The Lord spoke to my heart saying gratitude seals. Yes, gratitude seals all the other characters in our heart. Mm -hmm. How? Because when I follow the instruction given and have an attitude of gratitude in my daily life, I am always looking for what is right in my situations and in my personal life rather than what is wrong. So, you know, are you finding your problems or are you finding your solutions? That's a good way to know if you're, you're in an attitude of gratitude. Yeah, and do the problems you think exist actually exist? Yes. Because I know sometimes we can worry things into existence. Yes. When I am thankful, it is easier to display compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, forbearance, forgiveness, love, and peace because my heart is full of praise and thanksgiving. I am keeping my focus on him, and my joy increases. So does my strength to walk in this redeemed nature. I will always remember a young mother at the retreat when I first shared this Bible study. She shared her testimony, and with me at the conclusion of the powerful service, time of prayer she told me that she did not realize she had any problems holding her coins of covenant and could not understand why she seemed so unhappy she said that she began to consider the woman she knew best she came to the realization that she had lost her coin of gratitude she shared that she constantly complained because she didn't like her job she wanted a new house because now that she had two young children this one was too small she hated her old car, but couldn't afford a new one. She said that the Lord began dealing with her to find her coin of gratitude during our time of prayer. Her whole outlook and demeanor seemed to change instantly. She said she was no longer going to complain about her job, her old car, or her small house. Instead, she was going to thank God that she had a job in this bad economy, that she had a home and a car to get around in, and most of all, that her focus would be that she was blessed with a family that loved her. I watched as her new nature came to light, all because she purposed in her heart to be thankful. A thankful heart is wonderfully blessing, and an attitude of gratitude is powerful. Mm -hmm. You know, great, being grateful for what you have can actually kill a lot of the things that you were complaining about. Yes. Because if you're thankful... And I'm betting when she went back to her job and she was thankful that she had it. It, it her attitude probably witnessed to others. Yep, yeah, because 
you know, even though there are things that I don't like on my job, there are things that everybody doesn't like on their job. You know, the, what's the, one of the old sayings that we've liked in the past is, you know, the grass may be greener on the other side, but it's probably because there's a septic leak. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's been fertilized more. And, you know, we have to be focused on the things that are good around us because we can improve upon them. You know, yes. we're either a part of the problem or a part of the solution. It's just a mindset that we have. If we're going to focus on God, then we're grateful for what he's given us. Yes. Amen. So how do we keep our coins? By making sure we embrace love, allowing peace to rule in our hearts, and daily counting our blessings. This will cause us to always have a heart filled with gratitude. Love, peace, and gratitude are powerful characteristics that will enable you mm -hmm. to walk in covenant with Christ every day. Remember, love solidi solidifies, peace soothes, and gratitude seals all of the other characteristics of our redeemed nature and keeps us from losing our coins of covenant. Know we will rejoice and have a determination to keep what has been restored. No more lost coins. Finders, yep. keepers. Yep. So that's the end. <laughs> I think we have one more conclusion. Well, we can do that next week. Yep. Which will give us time. Well, actually, I think we know which one we're going to next. Yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> so there's not going to be the week difference. But, you know, God's been working in our lives, after, especially after this fast. Mm -hmm. And last week, you know, we were trying to figure out when we could come up here and I went full time at the PD and I'm subbing at the high school. Crystal has full time at the school and then Hannah got sick. <laughs> we just had one thing after another, but I'm really grateful that God's letting us continue this ministry, even, you know, if we have to miss a week here and there. And, you know, it's just those things that we're working in the youth still and there are things coming about in there that we really had a really good service on Wednesday we did and um, I mean we're just um, we're seeing God move and the kids are getting excited again and I'm you know I don't really I want to see the youth group grow but I want to see the individuals grow discipleship and have a solid foundation yes and because you can have a hundred people in there but if you don't have solid Christians, when they leave and go away, then it's not going to amount to much. Yes. So. Well, um, Gary's going to pray uh, a prayer. Um, if you have never made Jesus the Lord of your life, um, this is your opportunity to do that. Yes. And, you know, as he washes away those things that are in your life that, you know, you've committed the sins of and really you can start focusing and being grateful for who he is and what he's done for you. So let us pray. Dear God, I know I am a sinner and I ask your forgiveness. I believe Jesus Christ is your son. I believe that he died for my sin and that you raised him to life. I want to trust him as my savior and follow him as Lord. From this day forward, Guide my life and help me to be, to do your will. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And if you said that prayer um, with Gary, we'd love to hear from you. Um, and if you said that prayer and you don't have a Bible, um, please get in contact with us. We would love to get a Bible into your hands. Um, the, the word is very powerful yep. and you need to have it. And as a Christian, you need to, you know, read it and, and know it as much as you can. Um, but we're gonna, we're planning on having church tomorrow. If not, it'll probably be live. Mm -hmm. um, well, so we'll you, be here anyway. Yeah, you can tune in <laughs> and, and, um, catch it live. Please be safe. Don't, don't do anything dumb. You know, I know after seeing what happened in Dallas this week, it's been, you know, you just never know when you're going to slip into eternity. Um, and so please be safe. Um, if you have a prayer request, go please ahead. let us know if you, you know, need us to pray for anything. If you have a praise report, we'd love to share it. Yep. So, you know, if you're grateful for something, you can share it with us yes. as well. 
I mean, these are things that praise report doesn't have to be about just something you've been praying about. It can be about something that God's blessed you. Yes. And, you know, I'm just... I'm, we, are, we are thankful today that our Hannah is our Hannah today. <laughs> yeah. um, she just 180 turnaround after um, the Holy Spirit just invaded our hearts and invaded her life. And um, so we're grateful. Yep. And um, I'm just really thankful that God's who he says he is. Yes. Amen. I mean, he says he's the great physician and yesterday he healed her. Yes. I mean, we come into these situations where God proves who he is. By, yes. And you can't get any more obvious than that. Yep. We love you too, Mom. So and we're going to go. This guy needs to go take a nap. Yeah. <laughs> Been up for a little bit. <laughs> so, God bless you and we'll see you next time.